You really jumped out of a plane? No. Oh, oh you said oh, you thought I did. Yeah, I thought you did. But I thought you did. Yeah, so we, never, we, we both so, flipped yeah. it. When I close my eyes and think about my dream man, <laughs> I, I picture a man bun. Those are always great. <laughs> um, all jokes aside, I'm, I'm not so stuck on the way someone looks. It's about the way they carry themselves, that they don't take life too seriously, that they're not always stressed out. Um, I feel like I have enough stress for the both of us. I don't know, I kind of look at life though in a way where it's like, you know, if you're not doing something at least unusual, then you're not really living, you know? Sometimes it's like, I think you gotta knock down the walls. And in order to do that, you gotta put yourself out there. You just, even though it's like, you know you might get embarrassed and this might be like, wow, this could be painful. You just go and do it anyways. And the more you do it, I've realized the easier it gets. Hi. Your name is Jessica, and this is your story. You are 27 years old. For work, you're a teacher. You grew up in New Mexico. Your background is Hispanic. My name is Sabrina. I'm 23 years old. I'm a bartender. I grew up in Bakersfield, California, and I am Mexican. Your name is David, and this is your story. You are 26 years old. For work, you're a manager of some sort. You grew up in Boise, Idaho, and your cultural or ethnic background is that you're Northern European. My name is Travis. I'm 29 years old. I'm an actor-producer. I grew up in Las Vegas, and my background is pretty much American. I got none right. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> you got the Hispanic part right. Oh, yeah. Maybe that yeah, one, that's yeah. That's right. Why did you think it was from Idaho? I don't, I always <laughs> just guess when I can't figure out where someone's from, I'm like, the Midwest, that area ish. Oh, okay. Why did you think I was a teacher? Uh, maybe <laughs> just the top you were wearing. <laughs> I don't know, it just reminded me of a teacher. Good to know. <laughs> My mom was very, she was very strict, okay? She was like, you gotta go to bed at this time, you can't go out, you can't leave the front yard when you're a kid. You know, my dad was the complete opposite. You know, he could say, go ahead and do whatever you want. Between my mom and dad, I think I'm a combination of both, but I start to realize, like, as I get older, I know if I ever had kids, I want to be like that overprotective dad, and I could just see me being more like my mom. I think um, the best thing I learned from my parents was to not judge other people and to accept everyone for who they are. I think that's really what stuck with me growing up. I remember when I was little, I remember specifically one time that someone had said something about someone's race. They had said something racist to a friend or something, and my mom had hurt, and she sat us down, and she said, we never raised you to ever see color, to ever treat anyone like that. We are all human, and we are all valid. And that has stuck with me to this day. Your life motto is work hard, play hard. You are an introvert. The most spontaneous thing you ever did was jump out of a plane. One thing you are working to improve about yourself is your morning routine. My life motto is losers let it happen, winners make it happen. I am an introvert. The most spontaneous thing I've ever done is move to LA on a dime. So one thing that I you know, want to improve upon myself is putting myself out there more. Your life motto is young, wild, and free. You're an introvert. I think the most spontaneous thing you've ever done was skydive. One thing you're working on to improve about yourself is putting yourself out there. My life motto is live a life of no regrets. I am slightly more extroverted than introverted. The most spontaneous thing I ever did was move to LA all alone. One thing I'm working to improve upon myself is stress management. I just get stressed out about life, I guess. And I think it's one of those like internal things that I'll be laid back and just cool on the surface, but inside I'm like, whew. Is it you know, making mental lists and... Start to think about it too much maybe. Yeah. And it just kind of turns into like this stress and anxiety. Yeah, it kind of turns into this whole thing that sh it's not even an issue. Yeah. I think it's just, it's life and social anxiety and knowing I have to like, you know, talk to all these people and and email so many people about so many different things and it's like, how do I word this? Okay, I'll just, I'll just do it in a minute, okay. And then it just kind of builds up and it's not mm -hmm. the best. I understand. Yeah. I can relate to that. You really jumped out of a plane? 
No. Oh, oh you said I, you thought I did. Yeah, I thought you did. But I thought you did. Yeah, so we, you never, we, we both so we, flipped yeah. it. Were we both, yeah, that's Yeah, we funny. both thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. No plane jumping, huh? No, not yet. So you are an extrovert then? Technically, yes. Technically? Technically, yes. Why, what's, what's technical about it? Because I'm an ambivert. I'm more, I'm, I'm very, I'm extroverted in social situations, but I also get very, very introverted all, a, a lot. It's sometimes, you know, introverted, you can just get comfortable being, you know, alone, but that's yeah. like, you gotta push yourself to go do more. You know, quiet and introvert are pretty hand in hand. I'm an introvert and I'm, I'm quiet. I'm definitely not shy. So I kind of have that thing where it's like, you just because I'm not saying anything doesn't mean I'm shy. Just because I don't have something to say, I'm not gonna say anything. I think there's a big misconception about introverts. People don't really know you and they, they look at you like, oh, he doesn't seem sociable, he's standoffish, or maybe he's really conceited or this or that, but they just don't realize not everybody's a big talker. I've dated extroverts, very, very extroverted extroverts, and I've dated very introverted introverts, and I feel like because I'm right in the middle, I need someone who's also somewhere in the middle because, you know, there are slower moments that are very introverted and alone and, you know, be happy in that solitude, and then there are moments where you want to have fun and be with your friends and be out, and someone who's in the middle understands that better and is able to kind of be a chameleon in social situations. You should not have secrets and privacy from your significant other. Uh, I'm gonna say you do need frequent reinsurance from your partner. You were raised with religion, and it is important that your partner shares the same views. I believe you should not have secrets and privacy from your significant other. As much as I don't wanna say this, I do, at the end of the day, need frequent reassurance from a partner. I was raised with the religion, but it is not important that they shared those specific views. You should not have secrets and privacy from your significant other. You do need frequent reassurance from your partner. You were not raised with a religion, and it is not important that your partner shares your religious views. You should not have secrets and privacy from your significant other. I do not need frequent reassurance from my partner. And I was raised with religion. And it is important to me that the partner shares similar views. May I ask what your religion is? I was raised Catholic. Oh my gosh, look at that. You were too, huh? Yeah. Cool, and you're still Catholic? Yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I like to say that I'm like a Catholic Buddhist because I feel like in yeah. any religion, or any, I think in anything in life, you know, a sign of intelligence is being able to think for yourself. And yeah. um, any religion or any philosophy that you follow has been passed down by humans and humans are known to make errors so I think yeah. that you can't really follow anything blindly but I like the uh, blend of a, a religion with a philosophy mm -hmm. no I agree you know you got to be open to new ideas you can't be so close-minded and mm -hmm. you know I don't like that when people are especially people like to push things on people too yeah. and it's like I don't buy that you know exactly so so you do need frequent reassurance I was right huh? <sighs> I feel like you're kind of like in the middle but I feel like I was more Reassurance than not. Yeah. I would like to say that I don't need reassurance, but I think at the end of the day, it's like, question a lot about yourself and who you are. You're like, ah. Yeah, well, it's good. I mean, you're, you're honest about it, you know? Painfully. <laughs> Travis, when I first saw you, I decided that I would date you. And now that I've gotten to know you a little bit, I decided that I would still date you. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Sabrina, so when I first saw you, I decided that I, uh, I would date you. And now that I've gotten to know you, I've decided um, I still would date you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's funny, I was walking up, I didn't see you, but mm -hmm. I was looking down, but I seen these red shoes, and I was like... Uh-oh. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just like, it's kind of like, almost like this dream right now. It's, it's you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like unreal, it's weird. It's crazy. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> you know, there's, it, it was a little bit weird at times. It was like, you know, there's this uncomfortable, and you're not sure what's going to happen next. Yeah. Oh boy, it's like, you know what I mean? Put you on this edge of your seat for sure feeling of are you going to be accepted and you know that fear it, it's it's scary to be honest yeah so yeah. but i did it so we did it. <laughs> and you did it too we did it <laughs>
Super Cake.